Hey yo! It is November 16th, 2023. It's like 5.02 Eastern Standard Time. It is. The government's saving up all the daylight for next year. So it gets dark at 4.30 here in New England, New Hampshire. But I got about a 15 minute drive going back and forth to a couple of stores in the warehouse and shipping today, getting out some orders. This is my third and final trip about to get rear-ended by a Macca truck. So I wanted to do a quick video about deferred gratification because I see a lot of individuals misusing deferred gratification and so it's important there's a mean there's a you know there's a happy medium and then there's a you have to make sure that you're using it properly because you know if you've heard me talk about it before and some other people that one of the biggest indicators of success can be deferred gratification but you have to define success so that that success is more like financial stability or life contentment. And being content in life is a very good goal. You know, it says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but it, it really should be life, liberty, and the pursuit of contentedness. Contentness and contentedness. Anyways. So if you're, you know, a little kid, if you, you probably, not if you're a little kid, it, you know, it, you've probably seen the video of the little kid. And if you're talking about like marshmallows and food and stuff like that, that's bad for you in moderation, then having impulse control and being able to defer gratification can be positive in that manner. So, you know, it's like if you have one marshmallow now, you can either eat it now and enjoy it where you can wait and you'll have two marshmallows and then you get to enjoy two marshmallows. And there comes a point of diminishing returns on that. So I'm gonna just use this example. So if you're you know, a five-year-old and they say you can have one marshmallow now where you can get two later, then it's like, okay, well, I'll wait because uh, you know, in a couple minutes, I'll have two, and that's twice as much pleasure. And then you say, okay, well, if you wait twice as long, we'll give you four. And if you wait twice as long, we'll give you eight. And if you wait twice as long, at some point, you don't have enough life left that you can even enjoy those marshmallows to their full potential. So you have to make a choice when to stop deferring your gratification. I mean, that's a factor in your everyday life you know so like if you're working seven days a week and saying I'm gonna save money and then I'll be happy when in the future and I'm defer and you defer your happiness and you defer your enjoyment of life you might not ever get the ability to enjoy that because you're setting your life up in a in a in a in a manner that happiness is something that you receive in the future that you can't have now. Now, I wanted to find like content contentment and happiness because it's not joy. I think a lot of people are getting on drugs because they want to feel joyous all the time and happy all the time like oh my god the whole world's exciting it's my fucking birthday it's Christmas morning you know and that's not that's the that feels good it's not a yin and the yang type scenario you know you have some lows in life you have some balance in life and you have some excitement like that in life and because you have all three you understand all three if you don't have the lows, the highs aren't as high, but the lows are, are I guess the lows aren't as low, the highs aren't as high. <laughs> so, but you, you, you want to have a balance of all, all the three of them. So if you constantly defer your happiness and save it up, 
hoping that it's going to come someday. So you're just going between content and, um, you know, disappointment of certain things that go on in your life. Then you're missing out on a huge positive uh, influence that can balance out that negativity and that contentment. Because then the contentment can feel like happiness and the sadness can feel like the norm, which is going to bring you into despair, depression, and, 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 and stuff like that. And again, if you hear that thing, I'm getting some work done. I get, I drove 6,000 miles across the country and get in my stretcher place, but I can't bring it in until the 26th, so it's squeaky squeaky. Squeaky squeaky. I'll, I'll probably end up dying in my dying in my vehicle. But anyways, so the reason I'm just uh, this this is important to me is because I go online and I see a lot of self-proclaimed libertarians and conservatives, and I mean even people on the left, but mostly hardcore conservatives and libertarians that are like someday. We're going to dismantle the Federal Reserve, and we're going to dismantle government, and the world is going to be utopic, and we're going to have magic privately owned roads with flying cars, and then when that happens, we can all be happy. But till then, we must be miserable and yell at one another and purity spiral online. <laughs> and it's like, I got to tell you, man, you're... Oh, you know, I say this online a lot, but whether you are obeying the government or disobeying the government, you're still beholden and reactionary to the government. You should just go live your life, man. The government is just, it doesn't even exist. It's that spoon in the matrix. Just realize that it doesn't even exist. Yes, there's evil people doing evil things that want to throw you in a cage. And there's rules created by rulers that a bunch of people in costumes pretend are or morality, and they'll try and you know throw you in a cage because of it. But don't defer your happiness, your gratification, your family, your life, your abilities, and your the the, the beauty of living in anarchy on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of life is lived in anarchy. I went out today and I did nothing but negotiate with individuals and talk to them on an individual level. Um, you know, I play poker a lot, a couple times a week, and there'll be issues that occur and they call the pit boss and the pit boss works it out and everybody's kind of established that he's an authority on the matter. And sometimes they they still argue and they plead their case and he becomes a, a peer a peer style judge and everybody comes together and they work together and they end up figuring out at no time even when there's thousands of dollars I mean the PLO table the other day and I was not playing on this but the PLO table the other day is one table over from me is the biggest game big, biggest public game in New England there was 400 grand on the table Nobody shot one another. The cops didn't have to come in. <laughs> you know, they didn't have to call the police because somebody won a hand and took, you know, uh, $15,000 from somebody. People work together right now in the current day with one another in, in quite a bit. So what your job is, is just to dodge evil. So if you go to a poker hall and you run into evil or mean people, and I'm sure you do this already in your day-to-day -day life. I mean, you can stand up and fight the world, but it's gonna put you in danger, or you can avoid those types of individuals or whatever it is. You're navigating the world so that you can try and be content to happy in the moment to the best of your ability. And I really worry about a lot of these libertarians online that are postponing. They think that anarchy is something in the future. Anarchy is right now. You have to be able to see it. It's, it, it, it I think people misunderstand the, the matrix in this manner. It's because they're like, oh, he finally sees the ones and zeros and he re realizes that he's in a system. And... So now, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, no, no. The ones and zeros 
are, are he's seeing his reality. Like he's seeing the reality of the situation from within the system. So we might not be able to unplug fully from the matrix. Uh, although, like, you know, when you go out into the woods and stuff like that, you're, you're like unplugging from the technology and stuff. But when, when you're out and you're about, like, understand that it's, that, that these are individual people. Most of them are acting in an anarchistic way and are willing to negotiate with you. And those who jump to conclusions and immediately go, you know, it's like a video game <laughs> when you talk to the NPC that's like, guards, get this out. Oh, God damn it. So just stay away from the NPCs that call the guards on you. You know what I mean? Stay away from the people so brainwashed by the system. It's like that, you know, I hate to keep bringing up the matrix in this, in this particular um, video, but it's like when Morpheus is saying, you know, remember Neo and the red dressing, like these are the very same people that we're trying to save. Now, I kind of disagree with Morpheus on this thing. It's like, I'm not trying to save anybody. I'm being myself and living my life. And if people want to see that and follow in my footsteps and, and, and emulate that, they'll be free on their own. But I'm not trying to free anybody. I learned long ago that you really can only bring a horse to water and you can't make it drink. So whether you're in a, a, a relationship, a social relationship, a family, uh, a neighborhood or whatever, people are going to make their own choices. I mean, even when people end up changing and they change because of you, very few people will ever come back and say thank you. I'm a type of person that will do that. I have one of my really good friends is a devout Christian and I kind of see science like God and he was kind of a small government individual but now he kind of understands that. I explained anarchy to him as if it was God and so we've helped each other out and we've both taken each other aside and we do this quite a bit and say thank you for just opening my eyes to some new new stuff. And I had a friend, we're no longer friends, but I had somebody in my life that I had a lot of questions about veganism and no one would answer them. And she was, she was open to answer them and she helped me, you know, put some pieces together until I made the move. And I thanked her for that. And, you know, but most people won't. So anyways, I'm, I'm home and I gotta do a little bit more work, but I just wanna say, there's evil around you there's systems set up around you and there is certain things like saving for like um something you want if you run out of the funds or for to start a business whatever there's things that you have to defer your gratification or like if you want to be healthy and you and you put your health first then you got to defer eating certain things or defer going out hang out with your friends to work out that stuff is where you should be deferring your gratification and making disciplined choices but as far as waiting for life to be changed to be happy you're really wasting a lot of your life i know this is going to this is hard to say but I, and i don't want it to sound patron patriot pa patronizing and it's hard to see from certain perspectives, but because now that I'm in a safe, secure financial situation, I can look back and say, you know, I made it here and I spent way too much time deferring my happiness till now. Because when I got here, I was still deferring my happiness <laughs> and it wasn't until, you know, just a cut, you know maybe five or six years ago that I started putting my happiness in the moment. And so like, instead of being like, okay, I got to do a bunch of work. And once I'm done with their work, I'll go do something fun and be happy. No, now I just figured out a way to be happy while I'm working and while I'm doing all my stuff. It's something that, you know, you, whether you're working, working out, whatever you're doing, you're still living your life and you shouldn't be putting your enjoyment of that on hold. So I would suggest 
if you can, is reframing your life and reframing your decisions and setting your life up. And I'm going to cut this short. But we can do a longer video. Remind me in the comments because I won't release this for months. But I would set my life up, and I, and I explain this in our future video, just ask in the, in the comments so I remember. Set your life up in a manner that you get to be happy today, during the journey, not postponing it to a finish line, because the finish line never comes. Because once you train yourself to be happy in the future, it's always the future. So even when you get to the, the imaginary finish line that you created, you just want to push it further and push it further and push it further. Now, I get excitement from creating new goals to move forward, but I stay happy in the moment chasing those goals and purposes. So I don't ever want there to be a finish line where, where it's over. Um, science and God will take care of that. But in the meantime, you want to be you know, bouncing between contentment and happiness and, and joy and relaxation every moment that you can, not postponing it. Um, and I'll just leave it, I'll just leave it at that.